Today I'm going to show you some voicings that I think have the potential to absolutely just break your mind. Although I hope they don't break it and that we're able to get into them and teach you how to understand the sounds instead. These sounds are absolutely essential for you to understand and start to be able to hear and familiarize yourself with because there are modern pianists that are beginning to use them now and in order for you to become a part of that modern movement of music, you really want to have these sounds in your vocabulary. So today I'm gonna help make that happen. Hopefully you'll enjoy these voicings. If you've heard of any of them, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think of them in the comments. I'd be really curious to hear. And of course, because this is YouTube, I'm gonna save the absolute best one for last. So make sure that you watch to the end of the video because that one I think is the most likely to break your brain, but also you don't wanna miss the rest because they're awesome and honestly really important for you to understand. But of course, first, if you're new to my channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any more essential information just like what you're gonna to learn today. And if you know my content already, please smash that like button, really, really helps me out. The Piano de Voyage free giveaway is still happening right now up until the point when my channel hits 100K subscribers. If you want to understand how to enter, be sure to look at the full guidelines in the description of this video or watch one of the preceding videos that actually has me explaining them as well in the first few minutes of the video. But long story short, leave a thoughtful comment below to enter and once I hit 100K subscribers, a winner will be randomly chosen from the people who commented to win a free modular piano that fits in your, your backpack, which I use all the time, 88 keys in my backpack, absolutely love it. And of course, wanna say that YouTube is not affiliated with this giveaway in any way. Okay, let's dive into this voicing lesson. I'm really excited because I had a really fun time coming up with these. Again, these are absolutely essential for you to know. So stick around, watch each one, start to familiarize yourself with it, and be sure you wait for that last one at the end of the video. All right, here's the first sound. So at its most basic, this is the sound of a minor major seven chord. We have one flat three, flat five, but major seven, right? So instead of a flat seven, we have major seven. Very classic sound. But then what we're doing is adding the nine, sharp 11, and 13. Interesting sound, right? So I'd be really curious to know in the comments how you would name this chord, but here are a couple proposals from me. First of all, we could call this F over E flat minor major seven. Personally, I think that saying F over E flat minor major seven is probably the easiest way to describe this. We could also maybe call this E flat minor 13, which would look like this, but major seven sharp 11. It's another option. One third option is we could call it D minor seven over E flat minor, right? D minor seven over E flat minor. Again, very curious to know which one you would choose. Let me know in the comments. But again, this is really an important sound because I'm hearing it used more and more often. So practice it, move it around the piano. And at the end of this video, I will show you what I would recommend for actually integrating these into your playing. So again, be sure to stick around. Okay, this next one I think is really, really cool. And it has a certain sense that it makes sonically, even though it makes no sense theoretically. Check this out. Really interesting. So really what we've got is E flat seven with a sharp 11 or E flat nine with a sharp 11 really. Pretty common chord, but instead we're adding a four on top or a, or a natural 11. Sounds really, really weird. But you know when it doesn't sound weird is when you use it as a tension before releasing a melody note to a sharp 11. Now this is a really, really crunchy voicing, so I'd be curious to hear if you actually like the sound of it. I love it because of the tension it creates, and then that resolution. So one way you can name this chord would be A major seven sharp five over E flat. And I think that's a pretty good way of conveying it. All right, now make sure to pay attention because this next one actually builds on our first chord and is also yet another very essential sound that I'm hearing fairly commonly these days. So let's go back to E flat minor and hear it. So now, instead of just having that F on top, that F major triad, now we actually add 
the major seven of F. So we really have F major seven over E flat minor major seven. We get this sound. So make sure you actually get this voicing into your ear. Now again, be sure to stick around to the end of the video because not only am I going to show you my favorite one, but I'm also going to show you how you can actually start to integrate these into your playing. Let's look at another one here. This one is a little bit less atypical in terms of the sound, but I think it's a really beautiful and interesting voicing. You get the crunch between the three and the four. So to me, this really is actually a C sus chord, right? A C sus nine, I would say, or a C nine parenthesis sus four. But then we add the three, right? So the overall sonic experience of hearing this chord is still, to me, a sus chord, but it's strangely even more resolved, really, with this three in there. So you get this beautiful crunch. Absolutely love it. This is a sound I've heard used fairly frequently. You'll hear it more frequently with the third on top, though, so something more like this. Also really nice, but I love that crunch, which is why I wanted you to hear this voicing. All right, this next one is my favorite of the bunch in today's lesson. And then after that, I'm gonna actually show you how to really practice these so they're not just weird things that you try to kind of get in all keys but don't really know how to use. All right, here's my favorite of the bunch. Ready, check this out. This is so interesting. This is, let's see, this is a nine note voicing that has no repeated notes. So in the key of C, we've got one, five, nine, three, flat seven, flat nine, sharp nine, sharp 11, and 13. So it's almost like the single most altered chord you could get. It strangely doesn't sound quite as crunchy to the ear as some of the other ones we've done today, because this is all more or less from the altered scale, except that we're adding in this natural nine. Personally, I love the strange dissonance that it adds. What it makes me want to do compositionally is something like this. There's something for me that's unsettling about this chord, right? If the nine wasn't there, it's a more typical kind of altered dominant chord. But by adding that nine, there's a subtle uh, discomfort that's added. And personally, I feel unsettled by it. I'm curious, does this chord remind you of anything? Does it remind you of any specific pieces that give you a similar sense or feeling? Let me know in the comments. So that's my favorite one of the bunch, but as promised, now I'm actually gonna show you one really, really key technique for mastering these voicings. I don't want them to just feel like things you learned in a video, I want you to actually be able to use them. So believe it or not, this is a lot simpler than it seems. What I want you to actually do after playing with any of these, I want you to play it and then I want you to figure out which notes to you are the most important notes from that chord. I want you to come up with an arpeggio that feels interesting on top. So in this case, if we take the top five notes and come up with an arpeggio using those, but I want the D in the arpeggio as well. And you get this really interesting sound. And then the final step here is I want you to actually use it to resolve somewhere else or even try to use it in a composition. So I'm really kind of resolving here, saying that it wants to resolve to an F major six and then kind of resolving the F major six to an F major seven. So to summarize that, the most important thing you can really do is take the voicing and find a musical context for it, right? Something that's not just in the middle of an exercise, but actually something that speaks to you. Now, of course, that's just one method that I use to sometimes master a voicing and really 
uh, absorb it. But there are so many other techniques that I use that are actually all part of what I like to call my voicing mastery method. That is something that you can learn in my Jazz Piano Secrets course, which is an extremely clear step-by-step -step video course, eight plus hours of video, and it hasn't been open for around six months. It's opening for the first time this October. The slots in the course are first come, first serve. They are limited. If you're not on the waiting list yet, make sure you get on the wait list in the description of this video. I am so excited to be releasing and opening up the course again, again, for the first time in six months now. We've been doing only twice a year. So if you're interested, you wanna be working on some piano come the new year, make sure that you get signed up for that wait list and you will be the first to know when those slots become available. You'll actually get first dibs. And if you just wanna keep sticking with the YouTube video route and learn a bit more about my voicing mastery method, you can check out the video that I'm going to put right up on screen. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, again, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos just like this one. If you got a lot out of the video, I also really appreciate you hitting that like button. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.